Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Simon Kelly. I'm Principal Cybersecurity Officer at the Department of Health in Victoria. And I would like to thank the, uh, the IFMBE for the opportunity to speak on medical device security today. And I hope you uh, gain something out of this uh, presentation on some of our experiences and solutions in uh, Victoria. So firstly, uh, I wanted to just show you that medical devices are all connected. And this is a stock photo of a uh, operating theater. And these are a whole array of medical devices which are interconnected both within a hospital, but also can communicate outside the hospital via the internet. So uh, modern medical devices and uh, are readily connected to IT networks. And what I wanted to do quickly touch on, on some of the security sides of medical devices. And the best thing to do is to talk about a device and let's look under the hood. So this is a patient monitor, uh, uh, regularly used in many critical wards and hospitals, connected to computer workstations and mul multiple systems and networks in multiple departments and can integrate with a vari variety of systems within a, in a modern hospital. So when you look at the security under the hood on these, they're actually pretty good. Uh, a lot more green here than uh, yellow or red. Uh, they have run proprietary operating systems, which makes them more secure and readily, uh, not, not readily exploitable, like something that was running on a Windows operating system. They're often installed on large scales. On, and when you install things on large scales, you can do good things with a dedicated medical IT network with segmentation from other networks. But the things to watch out for is the, 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 some of the Windows components of these systems will be running one or two versions behind. And that's common with medical devices. Um, when you run things 24 hours a day and seven days a week, it might be a bit more difficult to patch them. And also the one thing to really look for for all medical devices, this is a common theme, watch out for factory default credentials. That's a, that's a significant security risk to keep an eye on and, and endeavor to avoid it. This is another medical device, uh, a arterial blood gas analyzer, also found uh, often in many hospitals. Uh, these can are uh, often remotely connected by to the internet for support from the, uh, the agent or manufacturer. These also have uh, uh, an issue where you may be running all one or two versions of Windows behind. But when you usually install these things on a, a medical device on a small scale, when you only got one or two, you don't have the economies of scale and you often just cut, plug it into the corporate network or everything else and that actually can provide means that it's open to the threats that are of, uh, of around on a corporate network as well uh, and these are the things that you've got to really watch out for particularly when you look at things that are con constantly remotely accessible if it's rem remotely accessible to your vendor it's potentially exploitable for remote access by an attacker so medical devices have an evolving threat landscape, and that's because we, as we more and more medical devices get connected together, uh, we are creating a, a wider and wider threat landscape. Now, medical devices are vulnerable from two ways. They, they can be exposed to threats from the wider ecosystem, the ecosystem they're connected to, but also they could potentially be leveraged uh, as a weak point in a network as an attack and a target to at attack wider ecosystems. Why would you want to attack med medical devices? Well, unfortunately, some people just want to watch the world burn. Uh, but, but these are four reasons uh, that uh, financial and political grain for the uh, identity financial and to access for identity financial and personal health information, uh, malicious alteration or denial of clinical service and therapy, uh, Wildsdale disruption is one, one of the most li likely motivations for attack where, where clinical services would be disrupted by making medical devices unavailable or inoperable. And they're the really um, uh, end game situations where a medical device is, is compromised and made unavailable via ransomware or destructive malware. There is also the curiosity and prestige uh, that that could be demonstrated by ha having a capability to exploit medical device vulnerabilities. Ransomware attacks are highly prevalent in healthcare as well. Uh, we saw in, in September 2020, the, the first attribution of a cyber incident to a patient death. And this was a situation in Germany where a hospital was ransomed 
um, with, with, with a cyber attack and a patient uh, died as, as a result of being bypassed to another hospital. But in, but in 2020, and unfortunately continuing into 2021, many hospitals globally have been uh, impacted by ransomware attacks, including those, some in, in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and um, our local Australian Cybersecurity Centre has, has detailed in a report that ransomware is currently the most significant cybercrime threat to the Australian health sector. For medical devices, security controls can be challenging. And these are four areas where, they, where it can be challenging. Medical devices are a regulated health technology. So manufacturers have strict requirements on how third-party software can be installed on a device. And that might, might, might mean it be very difficult or, or a particular antivirus software could not be supported to be stored on the device. Uh, it also means that security updates will require approval and testing by the medical device manufacturer before they could be applied to a medical device. Medical devices run uh, are diverse. They're purchased for the best of breed for, or best for the tr clinical treatment for the, for the patient. And that means multiple operating systems with multiple versions and hardware and platforms exist in, in, a, in a modern um, array of medical devices in a hospital health service. We use them 24 hours a day and seven days a week, which makes maintenance windows particularly hard. And we often have this legacy debt where with the long life cycle that we often see of medical devices, it can extend well beyond the embedded IT hardware and software components. Saying all these things though, implementing effective controls is not impossible. Now, the guidance security frameworks have emerged in recent years for medical devices. And here's the three, um, areas where and, and organizations have provide good guidance on medical device security and health services in many countries have applied security control for medical devices. Um, uh, however, they usually have extensive resources uh, to, to under, undertake this. Uh, one common theme is that the new cybersecurity framework is often utilized uh, for this work. However, uh, I wanna make a very important point here that. Uh, healthcare should be looking to other industries for guidance on medical device security. Some of the problems that we're looking at have already been solved. And the industrial control sector is one of those industries. Uh, they have many analogous uh, cybersecurity vulnerabilities in industrial control as they do in medical devices. And, and industrial control also is critical infrastructure just like medical devices and where compromised systems would put public health and safety at risk. Uh, I have gained a great deal of insight and also uh, uh, Im important controls from this sector. So the program we have in Victoria for uh, medical device security focuses on the whole product life cycle of medical devices. And we work to mitigate cybersecurity risk at key stages of that life cycle. We have leveraged industrial control system best practices particularly some of the work that MITRE ATT&CK have done in uh, threat modeling and defense in depth strategies. And these controls complement our existing baseline cybersecurity controls in the health sector. We have 10 practice areas uh, that we work to, to uh, mitigate cybersecurity risk for medical devices, uh, where we're focusing on uh, collaboration training between biomedical engineers and IT professionals um, procurement and asking the right questions, procurement to evaluate the security risk for the, for the technology. Um, we're in looking at endpoint protection and where we can apply it. And when we can't apply it, we actually note that and mark that in the risk register. A uh, great focus on network management where we actually reduce the attack surface and segment medical devices from corporate environment. And should we need to, uh, and unfortunately it's more of a when you need to, not, not an if, uh, incident response for uh, medical device. So, so this. Our program so far is, um, is now well underway. It commenced earlier this year. We're now looking to analyze on a, a baseline assessment we've recently completed. And we now have established a working group uh, that meets monthly for medical device security. And that membership of that group 
features biomedical engineers and IT professionals across the health services, uh, which we work collaboratively to mitigate the risk of cybersecurity and be informed on upcoming developments, particularly on uh, threats and vulnerabilities. Uh, we I'm hoping that we, as medical devices and, uh, and continue to mature uh, in security, that we'll see more improvements in the security by design uh, as we move forward to new medical technologies. But despite this, uh, one of the upcoming challenges is more medical devices are moving out the traditional walls of a hospital. And so the, they, they no longer have the capability of being protected by firewalls and other other technologies. And we are also going to have this legacy debt to, in the management medical devices, particularly for large capital built-in systems like an MRI or a CT. So some medical device security tips for LMICs is that I, I find that policy, process and policy is going to be more effective than technology. Now, um, you, you will find that you, could, you can, with the right uh, process of policies, you can leverage off existing technologies to in, in, to enhance the cybersecurity, particularly uh, with things like network segmentation. So start small with, with things like network segmentation and securing your remote access. And, and even earlier, you should even make sure you know and all the devices on your network, your, medic, your particularly connected medical dev devices, because you can't protect what you don't know. Uh, in terms of resources that are readily available, there is great guidance at a number of the regulator Asian agencies now uh, globally. I see a certain size uh, has a great resource on medical device security, uh, particularly with their advisories that they regularly release for medical devices. And also reach out to some of the international uh, healthcare communities for guidance spec practices. And I've listed some here, and you can also reach out to me at the Department of Health uh, in Victoria. Uh, there's some references there for my Prezo and um, my contact details, but um, uh, that's it. And I really do appreciate the time you've given to uh, go through this presentation with me today. Thank you.